Concerned citizens, led by Attorney Jose Feria, Banker Xavier Loinas, Attorney Santiago Dumlao Jr., Attorney Ricardo Romulo, Mr. Luis Season, and Mr. Jaime Cura, dared to dream of restoring the image of the judiciary. Thus was born the foundation for judicial excellence. Tasked with honoring judges, public prosecutors, and public attorneys, who stood head and shoulders above the rest of the field, the foundation plumbed the vineyard of justice workers and for many years reaped a bountiful harvest. Between 1991 and 2002, the foundation honored a total of 81 outstanding public servants. In 2003, the Foundation for Judicial Excellence bowed out of existence but the search for excellence among the workers in the vineyard of justice continued. The torch was taken up by the Supreme Court, which created the Committee on Judicial Excellence to conduct the search on behalf of the court. The search was now limited to judges and clerks of court. The committee institutionalized its own awards program, taking its bearings from the framework established by the foundation. In 2005, the functions of the Committee on Judicial Excellence were turned over to the Society for Judicial Excellence, which currently administers the annual search. Envisioned as a peer body, the Society for Judicial Excellence is composed exclusively of previous Judicial Excellence awardees. Its governing body is the Board of Trustees, whose members are elected during the Society's annual assembly. The awards for most outstanding judges are endowed by and named after distinguished chief justices whose families continue the pursuit of excellence started by these pioneers in the vineyard of justice by endowing the awards. Today, we proudly honor an elite group of judges and clerks of court whose work has been indelibly marked by passion, virtue, character, integrity, and excellence. Today, we add to the growing roster of those whose lives were given over to the pursuit of justice animated by the highest standards of excellence. Your Honors, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes P.A. Sereno, Senior Associate Justice Antonio T. Carpio, Retired Chief Justice Hilario De Vida Jr., Associate Justices of the Supreme Court, Retired Justices of the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals, and the Sandigan Bayan, Current Justices of the Tertiary Level Courts, Executive Judges and Judges of the various trial courts, our distinguished awardees, their family members, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's awarding ceremony for the 2014 Judicial Excellence Awards. To start us off this afternoon, may we invite the Chairperson of the Society for Judicial Excellence, Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Bernardo P. Pardo for his remarks. Justice Pardo, sir. Chief Justice Maria Lourdes P.A. Sereno, 
Chief Justice Hilario G. Davide Jr., Senior Associate Justice Antonio T. Carpio, Justice uh, Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez, uh, Chair Emeritus of the Society for Judicial Excellence, Justices of the Court of Appeals, Members of the Judicial Embark Council, benefactors, distinguished awardees and their parents, ladies and gentlemen. Today marks the ninth year of the Society for Judicial Excellence holding the torch for administering the awards for judicial excellence. As in the past years, we carry out the task with pride and honor, but at the same time, apprehension, knowing that in our hands lay an emblem of distinction to be conferred only on those who are truly worthy. Indeed, the award's 23 years tradition of integrity and judiciousness in the choice of exceptional men and women who best epitomize the virtues of an ideal judge is a legacy we must maintain and uphold in reverence to our worthy predecessors. In faithful observance of the tradition, this year's search yields only four awardees out of 17 second level courts, 17 first level courts, and four clerks of court. By their unquestioned integrity, valuable innovation, well-written decisions, speedy disposition of cases, and excellent scholastic records, Judges Angeline Mary Kimpo Sale, P.B. Mayor, Attorney Dara Mallorca Tormes, and Ms. Lea B. Tablarin measured up to the exacting standards set forth by the Foundation in 1991. They handled the incisive evaluation, not only of the Board of Judges, but of the Screening Committee. Their lives in and out of court were probed and assessed to ensure that they were untarnished. Despite the massive information solicitation, no one came to defile their names. This day belongs to them. This day is in some measure a tribute too to the men and women who ushered us where we are today. Among them, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes P.A. Sereno for her unwavering faith and confidence in the society's capacity to administer the search. The Board of Judges, chaired by Senior Associate Justice Antonio T. Carpio, and the Screening Committee for maintaining the integrity and judiciousness of the selection process. The benefactors for their generous commitment and support. Chief Justice Renato S. Puno, a loyal patron of the society. His support comes from his own personal contribution to the Attorney Luz Biminda Delgado Puno Award. Chief Justice Hilario G. Davide and Artemio V. Panganiban, who conceptualized the creation of the Society for Judicial Excellence, an independent and self-sustaining organization of all awardees starting the year 1991. By the way, Chief Justice Davide just contributed his personal funds in support of the Society. And the seven initiators of the Judicial Excellence Award, Justice Jose Feria, Attorney Ricardo Guevara, Mr. Javier Loinas, Attorney Santiago Dumlao, Attorney Ricardo Romulo, Attorney Luis Sison, and Mr. Jaime Cura, motivated only by their desire to rebuild the image of the judiciary that greatly suffered during martial law. Their initiative gave birth to a very effective mechanism of judicial reform. This long list only shows that excellence, like any good, can neither be the work of a single person nor of a single day. Excellence is a labor of lifetime and a collaboration of many minds. We are very lucky to have great people in our midst. As of this moment, it is inspiring to say that the country has a total of 141 awardees, 
Some of them reached the zenith of their judicial career, membership in the Supreme Court, and some are on the way there. Somehow, the Society for Judicial Excellence Awards have achieved the purpose for which it was created. Despite the controversies that once in a while affect the judiciary, it is good to know that there are those who continuously work to improve the system, who contribute their best so that we can have a judiciary we can all be proud of. Today, we let your light shine through. We appreciate your deeds and accomplishments. Through you, the people will say the best facet of the judiciary. Once again, in behalf of the Board of Trustees and members of the Society for Judicial I welcome you to this joyful occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice Pardo. We go immediately into the highlight of this afternoon's program, the presentation of this year's Judicial Excellence Awardees. Each awardee shall be introduced by a short video, after which they will be each be called to the stage to receive their respective awards. We will start with the awards for outstanding clerks of court for multi-sala courts. Our awardees will each receive a medallion and 25,000 pesos for the outstanding clerk of court for first-level courts, and 30,000 pesos for the outstanding clerk of court for second level courts. For me, uh, to be an effective branch clerk of court, you should be an um, effective servant, love uh, what you are doing, love the people around you. We're not just uh, working for money, but uh, uh, success uh, will be yours if you render your service effective. Tumutulong siya sa mga personal needs ng mga employees na cost of siguro hindi po pwedeng tanggapin yung designation ko as assistant judge ng Taranaque branch 77 kung hindi po napapagkatiwalaan yung branch court of court ko. Ang din ako sa kabila sa branch sa kabilang court na sa taon niya ko. Maayos pa rin yung branch ko. Nagkaroon ng bagyo. So, siguro two days walang pasok. Definitely, nung after the bagyo, nagkaroon ng pasok. Okay. Mapasok siya ng maaga. Pumasok siya ng maaga para gawin ng kalenda. Naayos na records lahat for that day. Pagdating ko, naayos lahat ng kalenda niya. Kung isipin niyo, hindi ko trabaho ng gaya yun kasi nga trabaho ng work yun. Nakipay ng kalenda. Pero ginagawa ko ng gaya yun. So, medyo saludo ko ako dahil ito. Lahat, no, disiplinado. No, walang, wala akong experience dyan na, na nagkaroon ng away o nagkaroon ng alitan no, sa mga nagkaroon. Then, siguro, no, hindi pa ako tayo sa leadership nila yun. It was in the year 2006 when, uh, when Attorney Gomez applied as clerk of court in my branch which has been vacant for almost two years already. I know in my mind that she was the one I was looking for, a very simple lady. I was not wrong. A judge, as we all know, needs a clerk of court who can be trusted, and I know that Attorney Gomez did not fail me in this. Earlier this year, I issued a search warrant and the respondent was a very close relative of attorney Tormek. And despite knowing about the search warrant, she did not inform her relative about it and the search warrant was returned with active assault. She really is very honest. She deals with the public in a very professional way. 
whatever is the act of crime, she makes it a crime that it is prepared immediately, of course, with the help of her staff, who are also very cooperative with her. The artist made is very strict but very much not. I am just so lucky having a penny for me. My band's work, of course. A good work, of course, should be dependable and trustworthy. And since she is an assistant of uh, the assistant of the judge, she should also have the image of judicial independence and probity. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 awardee for Outstanding Clerk of Court for First Level Courts, Ms. Lea B. Tablarin of the Metropolitan Trial Court, Branch 28, Manila. May we invite the Chief Justice, the Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio, the Chair Emeritus of the Society for Judicial Excellence, and JBC member, retired SC Associate Justice Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez, and Justice Pardo to join Ms. Tablarin on the stage, please. Ms. Tablarin will receive a medallion. May we also invite Chief Justice Davide to join them on stage, please. Chief, please. Ms. Tablarin will receive a medallion and 25,000 pesos for being awarded as Outstanding Clerk of Court for the First Level Courts. Thank you, Mr. Blarine. May we request uh, the Chief Justice and the uh, Justices to remain on stage. May we now call... Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the 2014 awardee for Outstanding Clerk of Court for Second Level Courts, Attorney Dara Mallorca Tormes of the Regional Trial Court, Branch 57, Libmanan, Camarines Sur. Attorney Tormes will receive a medallion and 30,000 pesos for her award as a standing clerk of court for second level courts. Thank you, Attorney Mallorca Tormes. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Senior Associate Justice Carpio, Justices Gutierrez, Pardo, and Chief Justice Davide. Now we will proceed to the awards for first level and second level court judges. We will start with the award for the first level court judge. This award is the most coveted award for an um, ordinary judge. No judge could then deny that uh, this is the award every judge is eyeing for. It is now uh, the pinnacle and the peak of all the awards. And um, I am very grateful to the Board of Judges of the Judicial Excellence and for the Supreme Court in then recognizing our efforts and um, affording us so much inspiration to strive and to struggle more for excellence. Bilang bagong kong, doon namin nakita sa kanya ang kasipagan, ang uh, pagpupulsigit, ang uh, determinasyon na kung saan eh, ang bawat kaso o asuntong nakatalaga sa amin ay eh, mabawasan at mapababa. Talagang sobrang mabait po siya. At saka ma magaling po siyang magmediate sa mga litigans. Na parang meron po siyang magic na kahit na 
Anong galit ng dalawang parties ay napagkakasundo pa rin po niya. Very persuasive when it comes to uh, mediating the parties. Uh, she is a very strict yet inspiring jurist. She also inspires us with her opening statements about the situations of real situations of life. Si Judge Mir po, napakabait po niya siya, kaya isang napakasipag na judge. Sa kanya ako lang po naranasan na, na talagang on time po yung mga hearing and proceedings po. Judicial excellence, of course, is owing uh, reverence to the institution where I belong, the Supreme Court, and uh, recognizing the professionalism exhibited and displayed by my fellow judges, the public prosecutors, the public defenders, the litigants, as well as their uh, counsels, and of course, my staff. As an uh, ordinary uh, magistrate, of course, I derive my inspiration from my humble parents, and of course, from uh, my family, specifically my Athenian son. I am, uh, of course, very grateful to the uh, staff, to the court personnel of the Metropolitan Trial Courts of uh, Manila, branches 17 and 20, and the Metropolitan Trial Court, branch 48 of Pasay, for allowing me then the opportunity to serve and uh, to be their uh, judge and acting presiding judge. I could not do all of these things uh, if not for their help, if not for the trust of all those litigants with respect to my property, impartiality, and service to them. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 Don Antonio Madrigal Awardee for Outstanding First Level Court Judge, the Honorable PVC Mir, Presiding Judge, Metropolitan Trial Court, Branch 17, Manila. Judge Mir, please. Judge Mir will receive a trophy of Lady Justice and a cash award of 50,000 pesos endowed by the family of Don Antonio Madrigal. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Now we come to the award for Outstanding Second Level Court Judge. This year, we have only one awardee. Judicial excellence is, it means giving our best wholeheartedly without counting the cost without thinking of any reward. Because if we do our best in anything and everything, this includes our work, our um, management, our um, dealings with the public, our relationships, all of these will be excellent. As a judge, as a boss, she's really a workaholic person. Um, she's a good boss and a respected judge. She is strict but fair. She is demanding, but I learn a lot from her. So as a person, Judge Sally is a very generous person. She always helps the minors, the CICL, the litigants, and also the staff. Her most outstanding quality, I believe, is her hard work and dedication. She treats her work seriously, and she is very passionate about it. Generous and giver, ang masasabi ko sa kanya. And once you are appointed a judge. Always be prepared before stepping out into the courtroom. Study, study, and study. But please, keep an open mind. Be grounded, stay grounded, stay in touch with reality, and do not lose your concentration on your work because that is the primary purpose why we are here. It's the work that we have. 
kahit nag-iisa lang ang kasong nakaset for the day, sinisigurado niya na pinag-aralan niya talaga yun. And she is always prepared and ready to face the litigants and counsels. Do not be afraid to get out of your comfort zone, to try new things. It's just so, of course, you have to stay within the limits of the work or uh, the reality of having certain abilities. But do not be afraid to get out and do many things if you think it's for the best interest of, the, of whatever person, your work, that you have in mind. Keep a judicial temperament. It's, it's, really, um, it's something that we imbibe as we go along, working day by day, keeping that judicial temperament. Um, she's not just a leader, but also an inspiration to us. So, congratulations, Judge. Pagpatuloy niyo po yung inyong kagandahan loob, ang inyong kabutihan, ang inyong pagkamasipag sa trabaho. God bless you. Congratulations, Judge! Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 Chief Justice Cayetano Arellano Awardee for Outstanding Second Level Court Judge, the Honorable Angeline Mary W. Kimpo Sale, Presiding Judge, Regional Trial Court, Branch 106, Quezon City. May we once again invite the Chief Justice, Senior Associate Justice Carpio, Chief Justice Davide, Justice Gutierrez, Justice Pardo, and Attorney Vicente Hoyas, the National President of the IBP, representing the family of Chief Justice Arellano to join us on stage. Judge Kipo Sale will receive a trophy of Lady Justice and a cash prize of 75,000 pesos endowed the family of the late Chief Justice Cayetano Arelia. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Congratulations to all our awardees. Ms. Lea B. Tablarin, Attorney Dala Mallorca Tormes, Judge Phoebe C. Mayer, and Judge Mary Angeline Kimpo Sale. May we now invite Judge Kimpo Sale to give the response on behalf of her fellow 2014 Judicial Excellence Awardees. Your Honor, Judge Kimpo Sale. Honorable Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Honorable Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio. Retired Honorable Chief Justice Hilario Davide Jr. Retired Associate Justice Bernardo Pardo. Retired Associate Justice Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez. Honorable Justices of the Court of Appeals and the Sandigan Bayan, both incumbent and retired, retired Court Administrator Zenaida Elepano, the Honorable Members of the Board of Trustees of the Society for Judicial Excellence, the Honorable Members of the Board of Judges and the Screening Committees of the Society, the Members of the Society for Judicial Excellence, tonight's Judicial Excellence Awardees, Judge Mayor, Attorney Tormes, Attorney Tablarin, the National Officers of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, the Women Lawyer Circle, my fellow judges, branch clerks of court, court personnel, and staff. Distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends in the judiciary, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my fellow awardees, it is with great honor and deep humility that we thank you for the awards given today. We thank the Society for Judicial Excellence and the Board of Judges and the Screening Committee for undertaking the difficult task of going over the requirements submitted by the nominees and for judiciously and painstakingly evaluating the performance of each and every candidate and finalist. We express our gratitude to the Board of Trustees for seeing what we, your dedicated foot soldiers in the trial courts do on the ground at the front lines 
and for expressly acknowledging and giving due recognition year after year to the work that we do. Our appreciation goes to the, reti to the retired family court judges of Quezon City, lame namely Justice Delilah Magtolis, Judge Chodoro Bay, Judge Elsa de Guzman, Judge Natividad Dison, and most especially, Judge Rosalina Pison, for trailblazing the path of the, the family courts now tread. We also thank those persons who endorsed our nomination for this award, the parties litigants, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, and the Trial Lawyers Association. The executive judges of Quezon City, the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Judges Association. We thank our Chief Justice for giving importance to this occasion by her most distinguished and loveliest presence in tonight's ceremony, and for the Office of the Chief Justice's involvement in its planning and preparation. It is a great blessing to have a job that we love, to have work that does not feel like a burden at all, but a job that we look forward to doing day by day because it is something that fulfills us and defines who we are. We are all privileged to be part of the great work of administering justice that helps ensure our democracy endures. And for us in the family courts, we are doubly blessed with the work that gives us the opportunity to deal with matters that are dearest to our hearts and closest to our minds as daughters and sons, as parents to our children, as wives and husbands, as women and men. Every single day in the family court brings exciting challenges. We learn many things there. We discovered how to approach and treat children who may be complainants or the accused themselves, and to speak and communicate with them in a language they themselves could understand. We realized that in the mind of the child, the concept of time is usually in reference to an event in their lives, such as a birthday, Christmas day, the first day of school, and the like that distance, size, color, and other physical characteristics are seen from a different perspective. What is malaki or big to them may not be malaki to us. Malayo to them may only be a distance of a few meters to us. In some cases, we also have adults with the mental age of children. They cannot fully take care of themselves because they are suffering from a physical or mental disability for which they are considered to be developmentally challenged. Once, we had an accused who was a deaf mute but had no official medical finding as to his mental capacity. Nobody in the office knew how to communicate with him. An arraignment was scheduled seven days from receipt of the information. We wanted to make sure that during arraignment, he would understand the charge before he enters his plea. In accordance with a Supreme Court circular, my branch clerk of court went to the Philippine Deaf Society and was told that the accused needed two interpreters, a hearing interpreter and a relay interpreter because the communication difficulty of a deaf, deaf mute is actually two-way, receiving reception or expressing or expressive relay. These interpreters, as my branch clerk discovered, were however not readily on call at the Philippine Deaf Society, but had to be reached in UP Diliman and the National Center for Mental Health in Mandaluyong City. Arraignment came and the information was read to the accused through the hearing interpreter. It was a very big production effort and we were all amused with the bodily contortions of the hearing interpreter. The accused seemed somewhat amused too but he looked mostly confused. And when inquired as to his plea, he nodded his head. My public attorney was horrified. So we decided right then and there to get his mother because according to my public attorney, he, like most deaf mutes, was unschooled and could only communicate with others through his mother and siblings. After his mother interpreted the information to him, he shook his head vigorously, left and right, right and left. Forthwith, we entered a plea of not guilty. It was that easy after all the trouble we went through. The unique nature of cases in the family courts can be best seen in those dealing with children in conflict with the law. 
for a child in conflict with the law to undergo diversion in the barangay or in a private institution. The court consults the private complainant and his her parents if the complainant is a minor and the members of the diversion committee who are the branch clerk of court, the public prosecutor, the public attorney, and the social worker. The committee draws up the diversion program for the child and also gives counseling to the child and his parents. It is a procedure totally different and alien from the regular rules of criminal procedure. All stakeholders in the justice system, including the barangay, the local social worker, the NGOs, and even the community, all work together for the child in conflict with the law. The approach is community-based and holistic, for it is a team effort to rehabilitate a child in conflict with the law, to restore him into a good law-abiding citizen in accordance with the principle of restorative justice. At this point, it is important to stress the value of teamwork in the trial courts. Actually, having teamwork was what my former boss, Chief Justice Renato Puno, advised me to do just after my appointment as Metropolitan Trial Court Judge. Without Teamwork, the outstanding performance of the awardees tonight would not be possible. Judge Phoebe Mir, Attorney Dara Mallorca Tormes, and Ms. Leia Tablarin will certainly agree with me that it is the participation and cooperation of the entire court staff, as well as that of the public prosecutor and the public attorney, that make everything in the trial court work well, speedily, and without much difficulty. So tonight, permit me to make special mention of my fiscals, Fiscal Jovi Calderon and Marister Vedania, and my public attorney, Ginaline Ramos. Ramos, please stand up so they will see you. <laughs> my other fiscal is abroad. Um, they are able to wit present witnesses and finish with their testimonies all in one hearing, in one setting. This is difficult to do, especially when they meet the witness on the day of the hearing itself and have only 10 to 15 minutes to prepare him or her for direct examination and for opposing counsel to conduct cross-examination, redirect and recross examinations if necessary. Their ability to do these things quickly and on their feet without missing out on the material facts, elements, and defenses, as each case may be, speak well of their competence, ability, and dedication to the job. My branch clerk of court, Attorney Ami Rivas, can you please stand up? For being the ever-efficient and highly dependable branch clerk of court, her cuteness, look how cute she is, and her youth have not deterred her from acquiring and practicing good management skills in the office, thereby effectively ensuring that the workflow is smooth and unhampered by unnecessary delays. Although I nominated her for this year's Judicial Excellence as Outstanding Branch Clerk of Court, but she did not submit the requirements for whatever reason she did not tell me. My legal researcher, Francis Owen Garado, stand up please, for his open-mindedness understanding and willingness to learn for being very patient, dedicated, thorough, and uncomplaining despite the demands of the job. My Sheriff Ligaya Tupas for the speedy service of summons and protection orders most especially. She alone and at night time personally served the protection order on the person of a very powerful local politician and then presidential advisor when he was surrounded by his heavily armed bodyguards inside his own house. And she served it to him. My social worker, Epifania Sedico, for her dedication to the welfare of children and her valuable presence in the parents' supervised visitation of children with the time extending to even after office hours and sometimes during weekends because sometimes the children are available on weekends so supervised visitation we have that on weekends and she's there my interpreter mary paspineda for carefully preparing the court calendar and making sure that court hearings and proceedings are orderly systematic and swift my stenographers emmanuel alfonso raquel alcantara Lisel bajang and marisa alcid for bravery in trying out new things, for getting out of their comfort zones and being the frontliners in the success of the automated hearing system.
They are the frontliners, sila talaga, stenographers. My clerks, Tina Carriedo and Jay Guzman, for diligently and politely attending to litigants and counsels, sometimes who may be obnoxious, who ask for the records of their cases, but my staff, they are very, very patient. For preparing all orders and notices for, services, for service and encoding all records into the computer for the e-court project. My process server, Jamie Francisco, for serving all court notices promptly at the risk of life and limb, especially when serving them in dark, overcrowded, and crime-ridden places where others dare not enter for fear of not coming out alive. Okay, my utility, I will have to mention, Gary Rivera and Ramon Nipulan, for making sure that all pleadings, motions, orders, and returns most especially are duly received and stitched to the record, arranging them properly according to chronological order of receipt. I am very fortunate to be working with this team because of their hard work, competence, diligence, dedication, their conscientiousness, or what we call malasakit sa trabaho. And most importantly, their love for the job. This award, this award would not have been possible. They are excellent. For the past seven years since my appointment to the RTC, my staff and I have been together as one family, and we have been exposed to all kinds of cases people can get involved in. The cases we encounter are more colorful than telenovelas, more dramatic than soap operas. For in fact, truth is stranger than fiction. But Judge Pison, <laughs> it is actually a wonder why up to now we have not become jaded, sarcastic, and bitter about men, women, and human relationships. In our daily work, no matter how many failed marriages, separated couples, and broken families, we witness and hear about every day. No matter how many cases of abused, neglected, and abandoned children and victims of violence we face and listen to daily, at the end of each day, we can always leave the office and go to a place that makes us still believe in the permanence and joys of marriage, in the unity and solidarity of the family. A place where there is love, where there is warmth, where there is affection, acceptance. A nurturing place where each of us finds comfort and draws strength from to enable us to face another day. It is the place we call home. For me, home is where my excellent half is. My best friend, my advisor, my shock absorber, my secret admirer in law school. Chief, admirer ko na po siya, law school pa. Hindi, hindi, Anonymous love letters pinapadala sa akin. And now, my housemate and roommate, my soulmate and life coach, my one and only husband, Jojo. Stand up, please. You rock! <laughs> Home is where my children are. They are my inspiration, my pride and joy. A hug from them takes all my troubles away. They're a constant reminder of the joys of childhood innocence and the wonders of youthful exuberance. They teach me how to do social media. I still don't have Facebook until now. But they teach me, and I, I forget. And also give me updates on the latest music, trends, and even the language of the youth. Javier Angelo, please stand. Boys. <laughs> You are awesome, super, ultra, mega. Home is also where my mama will always be, a superwoman and role model who was ahead of her times. She instilled in us the basic Christian values of charity, compassion, and humility. She taught us how to live a life of simplicity and prayer with a deep and abiding faith and love of God. My mom. Helen. In closing, let me extend my warmest congratulations to my fellow awardees. Judge Mir, Attorney Tormes, and Ms. Leia Tablerin. Let me, let me also thank 
Finally, let me thank the good Lord for giving us this work that we passionately feel about. This job that we have that enables us to do and give our best without counting the cost, fighting but not heeding the wounds. If you know this, you can say this together with me. Toiling and not seeking for rest. And working without seeking any reward, save that of knowing that we do it all for His greater glory. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Judge Kim Posale. I have to make a slight correction. The endowment for the Cayetano Arellano Award comes from the IBP. I regret the error. Now to serenade us all, may we invite back the members of the Supreme Court Choir.
you very much, the Supreme Court Choir, and of course, Judge Mary Angeline Kimpo Salad. Opportunity to thank the members of the Board of Judges for this year's search, as well as the members of the various screening committees. May we invite the Chief Justice, uh, Justice Pardo, Justice Gutierrez, and former Chief Justice Davide to the stage, please. This year was led by its chair, the Senior Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, the Honorable Antonio T. Carpio. Justice Carpio, please, sir. Thank you very much, Justice Carpio. The vice chair of this year's search is uh, already on stage, the retired Supreme Court Associate Justice and the chair of the Society for Judicial Excellence, the Honorable Bernardo P. Pardo. The members of the Board of Judges, let me call first those who are here. Uh, the chairperson, Emeritus of the Society for Judicial Excellence, Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice, the Honorable Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez. Also a member of the Board of Judges, a member of the Judicial and Bar Council, and Retired Court of Appeals Associate Justice, the Honorable Aurora Santiago Lagman. Thank you, Justice Lagman. Also a member of the Judicial and Bar Council, Attorney Milagros M. Fernand Cayosa. Also members of the board who could not be here, the Philippine Judicial Academy Chancellor and Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice, the Honorable Adolfo S. Ascuna, will be represented by uh, Court of Appeals Justice, Re Retired Court of Appeals Justice, Delilah Magtolis. Just Justice Magtolis, please. Two other members of the board who could not be here, incumbent Supreme Court Associate Justice, the Honorable Diostado M. Peralta, and retired Associate Justice, the Honorable Alicia Austria Martinez. Thank you very much to the chair, the vice chair, and the members of the board of judges for this year's 2014 search for judicial excellence. In the interest of time, may we recognize the members of the various screening committees by groups and may we, may we request that we proceed to the stage to receive your certificates as a group. The members of the various screening committees for the clerks of court. The chair of the screening committee was led by retired, retired RTC judge and chief of the administrative office of the Filja, the Honorable Telma A. Panferrada. Co-chair of the screening committee, attorney Engracio M. Escasinas Jr. of the Makati Office of the Clerk of Court. The members of the committee, Sandigan Bayan Associate Justice Maria Teresa Dolores C. Estuesta and attorney Alicia A. Rizos Vidal of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Thank you very much. The screening committee for the first level courts was led by retired Court of Appeals Associate Justice Jose C. De La Rama, co-chaired by retired RTC Judge Rosalina Luna Pison, members of the committee, Deputy Court Administrator Thelma C. Bahia, Court of Appeals Associate Justice Manuel M. Barrios, Sandigan Bay and Associate Justice Oscar C. Herrera Jr., 
and Regional Trial Court Judge Emily L. San Gaspar Gito. Thank you very much, Your Honors. The screening committee for the second level court judges was led by Court of Appeals Associate Justice Apolinario D. Bruselas, co-chaired by Court of Appeals Associate Justice Mario V. Lopez, members of the committee, Court of Appeals Associate Justice Remedio Salazar Fernando, retired court administrator Zenaida N. Elepano, retired Court of Appeals Associate Justice Edgardo P. Cruz. Thank you very much, Your Honors. We would also like to thank the following benefactors who have endowed and helped these awards over the years. The Integrated Bar of the Philippines, represented by its National President, Attorney Vicente Hoyas. May we call Attorney Vicente Hoyas, please? Thank you, Attorney Hoyas. The Avancenia family represented tonight by Mr. Tito Avancenia and Isa Maria Avancenia. Thank you very much. GMA Network Incorporated, represented by Mr. Jose Vener Ibarra. We also gratefully acknowledge the help and support of the Madrigal family and the Metrobank Foundation. And of course, last but not the least, as referred to already by Justice Pardo earlier in his speech, retired Chief Justice Hilario G. Davide Jr. Thank you very much. Thank you to our benefactors for your support for the annual search for judicial excellence. May we now call back our awardees to the stage to join the Chief Justice for their induction into the Society for Judicial Excellence. May we request Chief Justice Sereno, Justice Pardo, and Justice Andover Gutierrez to remain on stage, please. It's also for office. And for Judge Saleh, what it means to affirm your commitment to the Society. 
that is when I deliver my speech later. So kindly please repeat the phrases after me and in the spaces that, that are indicated, please uh, provide the data. This is an oath of office to, the, uh, to, I, to membership in the Society for Judicial Excellence. I, please state your names. Of the, of the Metropolitan Trial Court Branch 17, Manila, having been chosen as the, having, as the 2014 Don Antonio P. Madrigal Awardee for Judicial Excellence, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will well and truly perform, that I will well and truly perform all the duties of a member of the society, all the mem duties of a member of the society. Provided by its constitution and bylaws. Provided by its constitution and bylaws. Work for the just, efficient, speedy, and inexpensive administration of justice. Work for the just, efficient, speedy, and inexpensive administration of justice. Live up to the standards required of a judicial excellence awardee. Live up to the standards required of a judicial excellence awardee. Continue to develop and actively pursue continue to develop and actively pursue the personal and professional excellence of all the members the personal and professional excellence of all the members and promote their professional growth and advancement and promote their professional growth and advancement as formulated in the mission vision statement of the society for judicial excellence as formulated in the mission vision statement of the society for judicial excellence and i therefore take this oath and i therefore take this oath without any reservation or without, purpose of evasion without any reservation or purpose of evasion so help me god so help me god congratulations thank you very much for Thank you, Your Honor, and to our awardees. May we now hear a message for our awardees and for all of us from the Honorable Maria Lourdes P.A. Serrano, Chief Justice of the Republic of the Philippines. Senior Associate Justice Antonio T. Carpio, presiding uh, incumbent and retired Justices of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, Justice Bernardo Pardo, Chairperson of the Society for Judicial Excellence, Justice Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez, Chair Emeritus of the Society, and Justice Justo Torres, whom I just saw, uh, pres Presiding Justice Amparo Cabotaje Tang, Incumbent and Retired Justices of the Court of Appeals, Former Court Administrator Zenaida Elipano, Incumbent and Retired Justice of the Lower Courts, Members of the Society for Judicial Excellence, Distinguished Legal Leaders, leaders of the Legal Profession, our awardees and their pr proud families and friends, fellow workers in the judiciary and government, a fine day to all of you. I had earlier said that we would understand really what it means to be a member of the society in a few minutes, because as you see, under what we are trying to do in the path of reform, everything that we do is purposive. That includes membership in this very prestigious society. So I affirm my commitment that to the extent allowable that the Supreme Court will continue to provide support to the Society for Judicial Excellence. But that can only mean that the Supreme Court will also count on the continued effort of all the membership and leadership of the Society. So this is serious business after all. If we are going to consider what has just transpired a few moments ago when we gave the awards to four outstanding individuals, and may I emphasize female individuals. We are actually honoring but four 
out of the 30,000 members of the judiciary, both us, both uh, members of the judiciary as well as non-judicial personnel. And we are going to look at the statistics. That is quite an outstanding feat. And that is why I could understand the speech that was delivered by my former student, Gigi. And now I learned that my former student, I think also, happened to be her secret admirer. And all the time, I was really clueless, clueless about all of those things. I think what is happening is that it is like trying to find pearls in the vast ocean of the judicial world. I am sure that it is not because we have a dearth of good people in the judiciary. Because in my daily work, among the judges and among the clerks of court, when I uh, make the rounds of the courts in the country, I really see outstanding service. But it just happened that this year was very, very competitive. And I find out that really these four individuals stood out. And I am just so happy to say that the two judges who were, award, who were awarded this uh, afternoon also happen to be volunteer judges for many of the reform programs that are going on. And I'm sure Judge Gigi and Judge Phoebe, you would not have had the courage to volunteer had you not had also all the confidence in your staff especially in your clerks of court, that you would be able to deliver your commitments under the continuous trial system, under the justicia system, under the electronic court system, because you really have outstanding staff as well. So I'd like to acknowledge all those individuals who have stood behind our brave female judges who have been awarded this afternoon and the rocker of a husband of uh, Judge Sale and uh, Judge Mayer. Please stand up also to be recognized. I, I think maybe there will come a time when the male members of the judiciary will demand affirmative action. But... Uh, there is a window of opportunity yet for women to uh, raise unhindered by any obstacle in the judiciary. As you can see, even her, the female sheriff of Judge Saleh is up to par with the demands of justice by being willing to go to a politician, a powerful politician, and serve the process to him personally. Now that is, I think, outstanding courage as well. So to all those who have been bravely doing their work in the judiciary, unheralded day in and day out, you know that in a certain sense, what you are doing is actually contributing to the great work of justice. Because I don't think that justice can be delivered by the judge alone or the justices of the Supreme Court individually, but it is really the collective effort of people. So this is not to say that we are basically a country that honors individualism more than anything, but we are awarding these four individuals because they embody for us what is outstanding leadership in their field and dedicated service that is felt by the constituents. For example, as we are talking right now, hundreds of our judges and personnel in Quezon City, Makati, Manila, Angeles, Lapu-Lapu, Cebu, Davao, and beyond are involved in reforms. Like in addition to the e-court and the continuous trial system, the justicia, they're also involved in court on the mission and engaging in various reform projects. While some of them have been initiated from the Supreme Court, many, many of your solutions are actually homegrown. In other words, if there is sense in where the judiciary is heading towards right now, 
it is only making sense because actually you identified the solutions for us. I have never for once believed that the solution will come from the top unnurtured by actual experiences on the ground. But I think the more meaningful reforms will come from the people who have tried to work out problems that they face every day. The problems that were related to us by Judge Saleh, where he, she thought that the very high-level, sophisticated approach given by experts would be the solution only to find out that the instinct of the mother of a deaf mute would really be the best way that communication can be made. In other words, in the judiciary, you can find leadership from the Supreme Court that does not bury its head in the sand like an ostrich and ignores the realities of the workers on the front line. We cannot devise a rule without taking into recognition the difficulties that you face every day. Lack of logistics, your overburdened case dockets, your lack of personnel, even the lack of good interpreters, stenographers, the lack of information technology. That is why the intention is to empower you to achieve your full potential as individuals, as professionals contributing to the great work of justice. It is not for anyone to claim credit. It is not for the highest court to simply impose its will. But it is asking all the workers of the judiciary to work hand in hand with us so that we can really arrive at a state where our people believe that justice can be a reality. As we actually had articulated when we were together trying to celebrate the brave 27 volunteer judges who include Judge Sal and Judge Mir for the continuous trial system encouragement program. We were actually saying that this time we really need the help of everyone and that is why we have come forward and that is where we are moving because our commitment to our people is that the day will come first when the judiciary will provide the gold standard in public service. And that is a firm commitment by every member of the judiciary here, as well as the workers in the judiciary who are non-judges. And I think you can see from every face here that there is a 100% commitment to give that kind of service. The second is that that kind of gold standard can only be provided if our people can say that the era of justice being delayed and thus being denied is over. What has taken place is that justice is now being delivered on time, real time. So we have all that commitment to everyone. So we ask the Integrated Bar of the Philippines and those who have continued to support us all these years to not lose faith, faith in the direction that the judiciary is taking, rather to encourage every one of its members to give the respect that is due to the work of justice by cooperating with every solution that is being formulated by their judges, the judges before whom their, their cases are being heard, and to cooperate so that, in fact, even the sad stories about lawyers earning on the basis of delays will also be a thing of the past. So may I just give some vignettes about the four awardees who are here with us. Judge Saleh, of course, as a footnote, happened to be a student of mine, one, uh, one among those whom I happened to teach when I was a very young professor then. I for, again met her when I was Chief Justice as one of the most active judges in Quezon City. She is handling one of the two automated case hearings that are being implemented right now in Quezon City. 
But you know, this is not surprising that she has come this far, considering this, this is actually her second award. In 2006, she actually won the Judicial Excellence Award for Outstanding First Level Court Judge when she was just in her third year as Metsi Judge. So thank you for a two-pit. So I was asking, uh, does it mean that we have to double her uh, cash gift? <laughs> Is there some? As you can see, she also has a wonderful singing voice. And I'm glad that she has lent her creativity and her talent to the judiciary. And that it is a vocation not only for the non-talented in the arts, but also for anyone who wants to seek beauty in life. If there is something beautiful in music because it resonates the majesty in our hearts, the majesty of creation, and it stirs something deep in us, then I think Judge Saleh in her speech was telling us that her work as a judge is also mimicking the divine work of justice. Because I could see in her words that she had attributed a lot of the success that she had to the kind of faith that she had lived. But uh, I have to admire that she not only does things very creatively in her singing, but also in the day-to-day -day work where everything is just so perfectly organized. And uh, the fact that she is able to issue orders immediately, print them out after she had immediately uh, pronounce them in uh, open court is something that amazes litigators. And I hope that this will become the norm in future, that litigators will come to court, the judges are so well prepared, the forms are already ready, and after the hearing has finished, then the decision on the particular motion is made, and the judge and the uh, lawyer does not have to wait for two months to prove to his client that he attended the hearing, but he can immediately collect the hearing fee, the appearance fee for that session. But many, many things will change, and uh, the automation that is going on right now is only as good as the kind of talent that automation supports. It cannot, these processes will not have any meaning unless each participant in the system is committed to really seeing to it that justice becomes fully alive. Now, Judge Saleh is such a pioneer in many things that she is called in Quezon City as an automation bug. So, she's not a virus, no? But uh, it basically talks about the kind of improvements that she has been making in her own caseload, such that right now, there has been a marked 25% reduction of her caseload in just 16 months, making use of the improvements that technology is allowing her. And I have my fellow member of the Committee on Computerization here, Justice Bruselas, that if someone such a dedicated Judge, like Judge Saleh, can show a 25% reduction in 16 months. We had better talk about performance standards for all those to whom automation will be rolled out. In other words, we can actually tell members of the IBP that we can actually set performance standards already for our judges because we have the best people and we have intelligent processes. And the processes are driven by a Supreme Court that is committed to really making justice come fully alive. So I think Judge Saleh cannot be afraid of any performance standard that is going to be imposed on any member of the judiciary, as well as her personnel, because she and Judge Mayer have shown that it can work. If, therefore, the role of these four is to really prove that it can work. Justice 
can actually become a reality. If we just replicate the lives of excellence that is being shown in this hall today, then there is really nothing that the judiciary cannot achieve. I know that we are talking about the pillars of criminal justice as consisting also of actors who are not members of the judiciary, such as the prosecutors, PAO, IBP, etc. But may I remind everyone that the judiciary cannot at all underestimate its ability to influence even the prosecutors, even the PAO, even the IBP. If the judiciary will show committed leadership to reform, there is nothing that can stop us from also expecting the same kind of reforms from our partners in the criminal justice system. And we are already see, are starting to see it come fully alive because of the justice sector coordinating council. Now, even without automation, dedicated men and women like Judge Meir, who is a champion in dispute resolution, who is a wonder woman in the eyes of her staff, are able to make the parties realize that in many, many cases, a mediated agreement is really something that is most akin to achieving speedy justice for the parties when it is not really in their best interest to, uh, to go through a protracted litigation, then I think that as a sector, justice sector, judges, lawyers, legal academics have to come together to have a conversation about the meaning, what it means to be a Filipino judge. Because unlike our Western counterparts, our judges, especially our family court judges, are becoming to a great extent part counselor, mediator, advisor. In other words, it is taking much more than legal learning and training for them to discharge their duties now as family court judges. Judge Pison, a pioneer, has already shown the multifaceted life of a family court judge. So now that we are evolving a judiciary that might be different from how other judiciaries evolve, we have to start the conversation rolling. Because if this already satisfies the Filipinos' quest for justice, this approach that a judge who understands the situation can throw the best lights on it by explaining it to the parties, then actually we have turned a different chapter in our lives of judiciary and we have to talk about that in particular because it might actually more resonate with the Asian concept of face, loob, at sakit ng loob na nawawala dahil sa inaayos sa mabuting usapan kung kailan maaring pag-usapan ang mga hinanakit sa buhay na, din, na dinidinig ng ating mga hukom. We have so many things that we need to discuss as a people, and I hope that the legal profession is keeping its eyes wide open. You see these young female judges and clerks of court are leading the way to their innovative approaches. You can see a clerk of court who has been preparing the calendar even though the floods of Manila are threatening to inundate her court, she will not be stopped. She will simply do her job best. And Attorney Tormes and actually uh, Miss uh, Ms. Tablarin were actually both teachers. Both were former teachers. Now, in a sense, what I'm trying to say now is that they're actually continuing to teach us about excellence, about how solutions can be devised and how they practice common sense and how they show a heart for service in their day-to-day -day lives. In a sense, all of the members of the Society for Judicial Excellence are teachers. They teach people through the lives they lead. They teach people through the decisions they pen, 
They teach people through every conduct where they show uprightness and excellence in every form. So the society serves an important role, and this role must never be lost on us. That is why I continue to beseech Justice Pardo and Justice Gutierrez to continue the good work. And I thank Senior Associate Justice Carpio for never tiring in the work of helping out in the final judging. <laughs> of course, Chief Justice Davide just made a sizable contribution, so he should be thanked as well. But what I want to say is that this work must never stop. It embodies something that is important for us as a people. What we lack in our conversation as a people is a conversation about nobility, honor, excellence, faithfulness, truthfulness, uprightness. Too much of our media attention and too much of other kinds of discourses are devoted to things that degrade. The society is, con is acting contrary to that. In other words, it is, in a certain sense, serving the role of salt and light. Let there be more salt. Let there be more light. I congratulate the awardees, their families, without whom they could never, never have gotten these awards. Their friends who kept on cheering them every part of the way. And because they will now be members of the Great Society for Judicial Excellence, may the salt and light that they are made of continue to be spread and disseminated to every fabric of Filipino society. And may more occasions like this where we celebrate the good, the excellent, the noble, the wise, the holy, May all of these things bind us together as a nation, uplift our souls, and point to us a brighter future for the Filipino people. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes P.A. Serrano. That brings our program to a close. We congratulate all our awardees for this year, Ms. Lea Tablarin, Attorney Dara Mallorca Tormes, Judge Phoebe Mayer, Judge Angeline Mary Kimposale. My name is Attorney Theodore Te. On behalf of the Supreme Court of the Philippines and the Society for Judicial Excellence, we thank you for joining us for this year's ceremonies. We look forward to seeing you next year. We will now all rise for the Judiciary Hymn after which dinner shall follow. <laughs>